As you probably already know from watching my videos, the Netherlands is an indoctrinated society. The ideology that the Dutch population has been indoctrinated with, I refer to in my book as the religion of political correctness. This religion has basically infected all the domains of the Dutch society. The mainstream media, the education system, the legal system, etc. The indoctrination of the vast majority of Dutch society has been a very gradual and slow process. And a very important role in this process has been played by the people you can refer to as the intelligentsia or the intellectual elites. These are the people who think and talk about how we should all view the world. What's moral? What's right? What's wrong? Etc. These people originate from the academic world. They come from the universities and they are often the same people who work as lecturers or at think tanks. They often get invited to talk shows organized by the mainstream left-wing media to tell people how they should all view the world. Wat um, zegt de wetenschap daarover? Ik mag hier in Nederland leven. Uh, ik mag hier gewoon zijn. Ik mag ook op het moment dat ik in Turkije zou zijn, zou ik ieder mogelijk moment terug mogen reizen. Maar tegen iemand van mijn leeftijd, een vrouw van mijn leeftijd uit Syrië, zeggen we geven u geen visum en u mag ook niet reizen naar Europa toe. En ik denk dat in de huidige wereld, waar je dus inderdaad met staten hebt, met selecte groepen burgers, uh, en je ziet dat in bepaalde landen veel meer welvaart is, veel meer veiligheid is, en het dus verboden is voor mensen om te reizen, zich te bewegen van het ene land naar het andere land, je eigenlijk niet anders kan stellen dan dat we in een geboorteloterij leven. So here we have an example of such a person, who seems to believe that it is unfair to have borders, because she views the world simply as a bird lottery, where people just randomly appear in one country or another, without any responsibility to maintain the culture that they're born in, and to pass it on to their children and their grandchildren. What zegt de wetenschap daarover? Nou ja, als ik... The culture is influenced, among other things, by the intelligentsia. The intelligentsia originate from the universities. So in order to explain these type of phenomenon, we have to look at the universities themselves. In what type of environment are the minds of the future generations of intelligentsia? shaped. So let's talk about the universities. There are three things that are very worrisome about the Dutch universities. One, academics and professors are almost always left-wing. They are members of the religion of political correctness. This is especially the case in areas such as sociology, political science, psychology, literature studies, etc. So if you are a student and you only receive teaching from members of the religion of political correctness, then the unconscious biases that exist in the minds of your professor will over time be transferred to your mind. Two, the policies of the universities reflect the biases of the academics. For example, Islamic praying rooms at universities. Thus a totalitarian political ideology that opposes, among many other things, the idea of free critical thinking in itself. Belong at a university? Of course not, that would be totally ridiculous. But still, here they are. Islamic praying rooms at the University of Amsterdam. And what has already been around for much longer at universities are Islamic headscarves. If you're a student and your mind is formed within an environment where Islamic praying rooms exist and where certain students are walking around wearing an Islamic symbol that stands for the oppression of women, then of course you are not going to be critical towards Islam. And you are going to believe that the people who do criticize Islam are unacademic and unintelligent. Because everyone you know at your university doesn't have a problem with Islam. So there is no way for people who do criticize Islam to be anything else than just a bunch of Neanderthals. What uh, zegt de wetenschap daarover? The beeld that we vandaag de dag van de islam hebben is dat het een repressieve, agressieve, intolerante en in allerlei opzichten heel erg mannelijke, actieve religie is. Het interessante is dat dit idee van de islam van een hele recente oorsprong is, omdat je als je in bronnen van 100 jaar geleden kijkt, een totaal ander beeld ziet. Neem zo'n beroemde Nederlandse roman als De Stille Kracht van Louis Couperus. Die speelt in de Nederlandse kolonie Nederlands-Indië. 
de stille kracht die in de roman een soort mysterieuze rol speelt als een, een stilzwijgend passief verzet tegen de koloniale overheersers. Die stille kracht die is onbeskenbaar islamitisch. Here you have an example of a man who apparently doesn't know that in Indonesia Islam got adopted voluntarily by people who mixed it with their already existing religious and cultural basis. So this passive mystic power that he's talking about has nothing to do with Islam and everything to do with the existing basis that was already there before they adopted Islam. This man is an intellectual fraud, but he doesn't know that he is an intellectual fraud. 3. The fall of academic freedom. This is a topic for another video in itself. There is no real academic freedom anymore in the Netherlands. Academic freedom only exists on paper. In reality, if you want to do some study that is undesirable, meaning that it falls outside of the boundaries of political correctness, you won't get funds, your colleagues will sabotage you, you might get problems with some ethical commission somewhere, you won't get promoted, and advancing your career will become very difficult. The fall of the intelligentsia in the Netherlands is contributing to the dumbing down of society in general. Every time a new generation of students comes from the universities and enter the institutions, the society as a whole becomes more dumbed down. For example, when a few months ago, for the first time in the history of the country, a few local political parties representing Islam won a few seats in the local municipal councils of the cities of Amsterdam, The Hague and Rotterdam, no analysis of the situation was made. You would think that when something like that happens, that a talk show would invite a few intellectuals to have an hour-long conversation about what this means for the country. They would answer questions such as where is this going? What does this mean for the future of politics in the country? What are some of the benefits of it? What are some of the challenges that we will face in the next couple of decades? These are very relevant and normal questions that the intelligentsia in the country should think and talk about. This is what an intellectual elite is for. The harsh truth is that none of these questions have been answered by anyone in any of the Dutch talk shows and programs. The level of historical awareness of these people is basically non-existent. What uh, says the wetenschap daarover? Nancy heeft eigenlijk gezegd in een heel mooi boekje dat heet De Indringer um, dat de komst van de vreemdeling altijd onvertrouwd is en altijd ongemakkelijk is. En dat daarom de komst en de aanwezigheid van migranten, dat die daarom altijd iets van indringing heeft. Je kan die indringing en dat je er ongemakkelijk door voelt, dat kan je niet buitensluiten. En juist dat moeten we leren. We moeten leren om open te staan voor die indringing. Omdat een open samenleving precies betekent dat je je wel degelijk ter discussie laat stellen door die ander. Die er nu eenmaal andere normen en waarden op nahoudt dan wij. A few decades ago, people would think that this is a satire of the late Rome period. These people themselves believe that they are very intelligent and very well-developed intellectuals. And they even look down on people who, for example, support Geert Wilders. So how is this possible? How did the level of the Dutch intelligentsia get this bad? The answer to this question is that the dumbing down of Dutch society has been a very gradual process that can be depicted as follows. Academics become more left-wing. A generation of students gets educated by these academics. From this generation of students will rise a new generation of academics who are even more left-wing than the previous generation. They educate a new generation of students. And from this new generation of students will arise another new generation of academics who were even more left-wing than the previous generation. And they educate a new generation of students. And so on. It is not like the intellectual level of the Dutch intelligentsia became this laughable overnight. It was a very long and slow process to get all the way to where we are right now. The process to get there can be compared with the classic example of the frog in the boiling water. And from this process come the people who will enter the other domains of Dutch society. 
which has disastrous effects on society as a whole. Because these type of people actually end up playing quite influential roles in advisory bodies, think tanks, universities and other institutions. So here you have it. The dumbing down of Dutch society and the disastrous role of the intelligentsia which has been caused by the universities. It really is not a surprise that the election results of Dutch university cities show the Green Party and D66 to be the winners of that region. A party that thinks that we should take in unlimited migrants and a party that is afraid of referenda and doesn't truly respect democracy. Wat uh, zegt de wetenschap daarover? This is Paul from debatelab.com. If you like the content, you can subscribe to this channel by clicking the big red button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.